Well, it finally happened. Canon pulled the plug and canceled the M series cameras, including the M50 Mark II, which if you've been following me here for a while, you know, this is my favorite setup, the Canon M50 Mark II with a Sigma 16 millimeter lens. I call it the Sweet 16. And now this icon of a YouTube tool is, well, it still works fine, but let's talk about the fact that it's been canceled by Canon. And I do have a viable alternative that I wanna share with you that I'm recording on right now. But if you're new here, my name is Meredith and I'm here to help you look good, sound good, and feel good on camera so that you can build your thriving online business with YouTube. And there is nothing I love more than a simple set it and forget it setup for creating YouTube videos. But oh boy, are there a crap ton of options out there if you go searching for what camera should I use to make my YouTube videos? They're going to run from like $500 to $5,000, even for cameras for regular talking head video like what I'm creating here. And if you've ever been curious about or wondering about getting a real camera um, or upgrading the camera that you have, instead of using your phone or your built-in webcam, you know there are a ton of options out there. And it's very confusing, which is why I have loved the M50 Mark II for the last, I guess, three years or so, especially with the Sigma 16 millimeter lens. I hope that by eliminating this lineup, it becomes less confusing, especially when it comes to lenses. And to be perfectly honest, when I talk about this being my favorite setup, it's not really the camera. It's the lens. This lens from Sigma, which runs about, I think, 400 bucks. It'll probably be cheaper now. But I think I bought it for $400. Slap this thing on this $600 camera, and it just creates a crisp image, especially for a talking head crisp image, blurry background, great colors, and in a small space. It's a magical combination. But Canon's new mirrorless cameras, new within the last, like, what, three years, four years, they aren't inherently compatible with this beautiful Sigma lens. Canon can do whatever it wants, but why was Sigma able to create this for $400 when to get the same look out of like a Canon lens, we're, we're talking about thousands of dollars. So I hope it's true that Canon has allowed brands like Sigma to create RF style lenses. And I hope Sigma has already secretly been working on them and they will be released soon because there are some really great camera options as alternatives to the M50 Mark II and all of the other M series cameras. So let me talk about what I'm shooting on right now as the sun just went behind a cloud and probably totally messed up my lighting. <laughs> All right. So now I'm back to shooting with the Canon M50 Mark II with a Sigma 16 millimeter lens. And I just want to point out, just want to point out that although what I'm about to show you is a viable alternative, it is not, it's not the same. I mean, let's just compare the nice blurry background here versus the nice blurry background that this gave me. It's, it's not the same. It doesn't look the same. So anyway, this is the Canon R10. It is small. It is crop sensor like the M50 Mark II. And I did buy a lens separately for this. I was basically on the hunt for achieving the same or similar look to what I'm using here with the R10 without spending $1,200, $1,800 on a lens. So this is a Canon brand, 16 millimeter lens, and it goes to f2.8, whereas the Sigma goes to f1.4. So small number difference, but big difference in terms of depth of field. And I think the cheapest I've seen the R10 is just under a thousand. I think you can get the body alone for like nine something. And I bought this extra lens for I think 250. When I did buy the R10, I bought it with this lens here as the kit lens, because at the time there were only two options. So this is 18 to 150 lens F 
What does this go to? 3.5. So, you know, it's like, it's fine. It's like a standard kit lens, not fancy lens. But this lens is okay. It's only $250, which if you know anything about lenses, that's cheap. That's a really cheap lens. And it is a cheap lens. I'm not going to lie. It is comparable to what I'm using here. It's just not as good. It's not the same. It doesn't give me the same feel. And it's probably one of those things that no one else is going to notice or care but me. This is what happens when I wait until like after 2 p.m. to record a video. The sun comes to this side of the house and then the clouds are out and they just mess up my whole thing. Fortunately, the fact that Canon has canceled the M series doesn't really change much about like using it. So if you have an M50 Mark II because I recommended it, you're in luck. You get to keep it and keep using it. If you're in the market for a camera that I recommend, I would pick up the M50 Mark II. Uh, but if you can't find one because they are no longer manufactured. I think the R10 at the time of this recording is definitely a viable alternative. There are a couple of other viable alternatives as well, one of them being the R50 and the other one being the R7. I gotta fix this. Okay, I just changed the aperture. Just gave it a little bit of a tweak to accommodate the bright sunshiny day. The R10 and the R7 came out at the same time around May 2022, I believe. And the R50 came out in February 2023. And if you compare those three cameras, they all kind of like swim in the same pool. I think the R10 is like the Goldilocks. It's right there in between them. But I will say if you're considering the R50 as an alternative to the M50 or the M50 Mark II, you're going to run into an extremely annoying problem. If you, like me, love to have a set it and forget it YouTube setup in your YouTube goal, the problem is with the M50 Mark II and with the R50 is because the actual body of the camera is a little bit on the small side, you're going to run into this problem of the battery door not being able to be opened if you're mounted onto your tripod. And it may not seem like that big of a deal, but let me tell you, switching out a memory card or switching out a battery without having to take your setup apart is a big deal. And you have more physical dials and things on the R10 than what you have on the R50 as well. So if you do like to do some photography and you do like to use the camera in manual mode, is there really any other way to have fun taking pictures? Just use an iPhone if you're going to go full auto. But anyway, you have all of all of these other knobs here for using in manual mode. Buttons and knobs are nice, even for video mode. I think the R10 has, it's just, it's more manual mode friendly. I should also mention here that one of the benefits of having a real camera for your talking head videos or your video podcast is the fact that you can put it in manual mode and get good quality video footage and a good blurry background. And I have some videos on my channel showing how to use a camera in video mode, in manual mode for these kinds of videos. But I have some fresh new content around the area of recording and settings and going manual and things like that coming. So make sure you hit subscribe, hit that like button and let me know if you want to learn more about using your real video camera in manual mode to create videos for YouTube. The R7 is even more friendly. You have two memory card slots. It's weather sealed. I don't take my cameras out in inclement weather. So, I mean, that's not a big deal to me. But when I was comparing the R7 and R10, I decided the extra cost of the R7 wasn't really worth it. I mean, at that point, at $1,300, $1,500, you might as well get a full frame 
mirrorless camera. So if you have an M series camera or a sweet 16 setup like I have here, take very good care of it because at some point in the future, you probably won't be able to replace it exactly the way that it is. And cross your fingers that we get some really good, really affordable Sigma lenses for the RF mounts that can be used on the R10. You can bet your bottom dollar I'll be telling you about it when that happens. For now, I'm going to continue using the M50 Mark II, and I'll still be using the R10 with the 16 millimeter lens as well. And all of this happened in very interesting timing because I just finished my Crush It On Camera guide, which is a downloadable PDF. And it's going along with the whole series I'm doing here on my channel all about the gear and the setup that you need to create professional looking talking head videos and video podcasts that grow your audience with ease. So now I'm going to update that PDF and be very grateful that I didn't record any videos yet for that series where I'm just gushing about the M50 Mark II. So thank you, Canon, for the timing. And make sure you're subscribed to this channel so you don't miss any of the Crush It On Camera series videos that are coming very soon. I will link to that playlist here, although at the time I hit publish, the videos haven't been created yet. So be patient.